the name, yes, Bernard Ackrill, and I'm in, in very nearly 80 years, will be in June, and I went first to the Bristol Airplane Company in 1944 um, and uh, started working then with in, in the company vehicle garage at the bottom of Fairlawn Lane inside, inside the works. And I did a five-year apprenticeship um, and had a whale of a time. It was really wonderful. We um, probably the greatest continuous period of enjoyment until I met Betty. And towards the end of that time, um, the Bristol car, of course, was um, apparent to us all because uh, it, um, it featured in the works um, quite frequently. And um, I got seconded to the experimental research department of the Bristol, and I didn't much enjoy it at the time. I must confess that um, um, I was running near the end of my time because my apprenticeship finished within six months or so of being with Bristol, and I was due to go into the services. So I was looking forward to running out with friends and circumstances that uh, were familiar to me. And I didn't really much enjoy going into Bristol. However, I think they started to uh, expand and uh, stretch the car business. Uh, and, and in the process, develop this research uh, development program. What, what year would that be? 40, 49, 50. Yes. I think it was because I left in June, in July actually, in, in 1950, it would have been 49. Yes. Late in 49. And um, uh, they, they took another engineer, another mechanic that I used to work with in the, in the garage, a fellow called Robinson, who was probably long gone now. And, and as a result of his experience with me in the garage business, he asked for me to follow, and I wish he hadn't really. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, we did. And uh, being of such a lowly position in, in the organization, I had to keep quiet and behave myself and do what I was told to do and what was expected of me. And we, we were um, pretty much ignored as uh, um, apprentices. Yes. You, you were there to, to perform a duty and behave yourself and speak when you're spoken to. Yes, and, get your, and do your day release, I suppose. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And mainly our um, purpose during that period was to run um, an engine uh, without the crankshaft or without um, the pistons in Conrad, driving just the camshaft to uh, study the valve mechanism and particularly to... to um, register the point of valve bounce, which in those days was really quite a significant um, deterrent to good output, power output. And this is really what we're concentrating on. So the job really was just removing cylinder head, swapping valves, checking and putting in n new springs and starting the whole process of regain using a strobe, strobe light, to freeze the engine in the and any mechanical bits we wanted to look at. Well, this went on for about three months, and then they sent me to the engine test bed. Now, this was uh, an annex sort of building in a quarry on the Fayland Hills, outside of Bristol and 
it was the uh, principal test beds for the big radials that were being manufactured for um, the Brabazon and and uh, any that followed afterwards and we had to share the noise of two radials running for um, something like eight or nine hours a day and in our little shack we had the um, Bristol engine on the test bed with a brake running with um, a specially tuned exhaust system and uh, we were during my time we were experimenting with different carburation um, this, we were testing uh, performance with Solex and SU and I believe previously they had used tried Faber's uh, to maximize the performance so it sort of linked with the um, valve spring experiments because they would then be incorporated in the in the engine on the test bed and that really was just about it there was an amusing uh, piece of nonsense at, at the uh, in the um, research development department a motor car arrived one day a sporting car with motorcycle wings and aero screen and uh, I gathered that it was um, possibly a Fraser Nash that had the Bristol engine in and uh, it was I think its first visit and all the bigwigs were there including Sir Stanley White and he was um, um, encouraged shall we say to, to test this car down the road which he did he climbed in and sitting there with his trilby hat he pressed the accelerator pedal in a low gear and disappeared down the road at a great rate of knots and leaving his trilby hat suspended in the air behind him something of a cartoon really but it was quite amusing just a piece of nonsense and I think really that's pretty much the sum total can you remember any of the characters about in those days you mentioned um, you mentioned white but um, do you remember the George white George white yes he was much more into the he was a Jolly nice chap, actually. Yes. Yeah, it was. Yes. He was among the boys. I always find him walking about the factory. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And um, uh, who was in the works at that time? I mean, was Sid Lovesy there at that time? Do you remember that name? No. I, I didn't work very hard at remembering names, right. Stefan. Right. I was really only anxious at getting in and getting out. Right. Terrible yeah. waste of wonderful experience, but it's... You were it's, a, it's the wisdom that comes with. You were a reluctant. You were a reluctant hero on the on the <laughs> apprentice front. <laughs> Was not not very heroic. Oh, I must. I've forgotten something. You can plug it in later. We certainly can. We um, the company ran a, 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 a chassis, and it was bleak in all senses. It was expressly a chassis, bonnet, no windscreen, and couple of dedicated drivers and their duty was to drive the car from Felton to Land's End and back again non-stop day and night summer and winter they were the heroes they really were and um, the story goes apocryphal they used to drive the chassis up and down the canteen steps as a method of testing the suspension after each trip to Cornwall and back it would go up and down the steps of the canteen a small thing well we've had another story about that because the illustrator Amy Newell was take was had a ride to Castle Coombe and back on it yeah she was the, she was the lady that did the parts illustration for the for the uh, for the parts manual so she's she's 
it made a big impression on everybody, that chassis, I think. It did, yes. Um, it was so much a part of our daily life because it used to come to our garage to fill up with fuel. Yes. And uh, it's the only time they switch the engine off, really. This must have been an extraordinary setting because it's an aircraft company yes. building a motor vehicle. Very strange. And which they wouldn't really know a great deal about. Absolutely. Nothing so, at all. So you'd come over from the motor vehicle side... Yes. Uh, with, you actually had expertise. Remarkable, yes, yes. but it, <laughs> pretty minimal. I must admit, by the time I got there, yes. they, they were doing clever things with... Uh, uh, one quite le late-aged gentleman m making magical door locks. Right. And piecing these together and creating them. And um, There were some very clever technicians working... So I don't know where it all came from in the first place, mm. because well, it was really just the three to six when it when it arrived. Yes, yes, and, but then and they that's had, all they had. Well, but then they had their metallurgy experience throughout the war of developing alloys. Oh yes, and they were clever in the, in their engineering, but and they had the engineering expertise, but but not applying to motor vehicles. No, not at all. Not at all. I can't understand, really. So they, they, they did do it quite well, I fancy. Well, they, 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 we're still driving around in them, so they we must are. have got something right. <laughs> um, but so, what, what early models of cars were you? In, do, you do you remember seeing up to 1950? 400, 401. Yes. You've got the 400. Yes, yes. And the 401 came in quite quickly. They changed the bumper style and won several other things. Yes. There were some Italian prototypes brought over from from there was Milan. One. Do you yeah, remember there was. those? I saw that. Yes, you did see it. Yes. What, what, what do they like, do with it? Oh heavens, I don't know. It disappeared right. quite quickly. Yes. yes. We were, my particular focus, if one can claim that's a focus, yes. is engines. Yes. Yes. Pure and simple. Yes. I didn't even get to look at a gearbox, although I, I, it's unique in in its construction. Yes. The splits of the middle. Yes. Wonderful for maintenance. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the most wonderful gearboxes I've ever seen. And it's certainly a wonderful thing to drive, a Bristol gearbox. Yes. It's like a piece of clockwork. It is. Um, OK, so that's early models. It's, uh, any other, uh, we've talked about characters. What were you paid a week in those days as an apprentice? Um, Not much. At my 21st... Um, birthday. Yes, I would have been um, uh, uh, considered to be um, a skilled engineer or skilled mechanic. Yes, and it, and then we got ten pounds a week. Right. So we were living like lords. Yeah. Well, that wasn't a bad wage in those days, actually, mm. was it? No. Right. Um, Quite good. And, and where where did you live? Where, where did you live? Where did we live? Yes. In Bristol. Yes. In yes. Brislington, in Bristol. Yes. 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 Um, and what about conditions in the works? Did you eat in the... Were the you, had, you had works canteen. What was the staff oh, welfare like? How were the staff looked excellent, after? Excellent. Yes. Uh, very good indeed. You got uh, full pay if you were way sick. Yes. I mean, they were a wonderful company to work for. Yes. And they did have all the facilities. They had... Uh, um, a medical centre, yes. staffed by um, um, <laughs> I don't know quite what the adjective is. He, one, one or two truly brutal men. Right. They were hideous. You're, you're choosing your words with care here, <laughs> yeah. Spe as you're speaking to one. Yeah, they were. They were pretty heavy-handed with their right. medical practices. Yes. Yes. Uh, but generally speaking, it was a splendid company to work for. But that, but that, of course, was what you started before the birth of the National Health Service. We did. So you were given free medical care. Yes. Which was a considerable... Yes. I mean, the company, I think, was marvellous in all, all yes. aspects of uh, social yes. care. Yes. Yes. They were very caring. And the team, uh, we were about 30 in the garage, brilliant. Right, right. And, and there's just one little thing. I, from this distance, I look back and see how I wasted glorious opportunities because we had garaged with us through the war 
two eight-litre Bentleys. Wow. And although I used to glance at them from time to time and sort of think of them and as uh, something rather wonderful, we um, never got to touching them. It, 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 now and again, we'd start one up. Yes. And let it run. And I remember walking in on a winter's morning um, at about, we, we used to start at eight, so it would have been about quarter to eight in the morning, walked through the wash, yes. the car wash, big car wash, and these two Bentleys had us behind the curtain. And it was warm as I walked in. Yes. And uh, I noticed that the louvers were open on the radiator. And the chappy who was responsible for starting the engine to keep it had gone home and left it running all night. Right. Silence. Yes. Nothing. Absolutely wonderful. Left it that's, when over. It, that's when it came to me that it yes. began to dawn on me that there's some wonderful old stuff about. Yes. Yes. But um, the, but the um, we had uh, the factory had its own power station. Uh, we ran um, from the grid. We had two thirty volt mains. Well, it was wasn't there two hundred and ten then, and um, but we had an internal power supply of a hundred and ten. Yes, and uh, water, hot water, everything was centrally heated. It was a fine place to work. You told me about the noise when you were testing the engines. Oh, hideous! What effect did that have on you? Deafness. <laughs> You think, no, I think it must have started then. Yes. I'm sure it was, yes. Oh, it was absolutely devastating. I had a little motorbike, a yes. 250cc Enfield, and I used to ride to and fro Bristol, from Brislington out to Phelan, and I would come home over the suspension bridge, and I would leave Phelan and not hear the engine until I was in Clifton. Right. And we had been wearing earplugs all day. Yes, yes. But, but they weren't terribly efficient. No, no. But that was monumental. I and mean, when you, uh, the, just to be in the room with the Bristol running, because they would just wind throttle right up to maximum until you got full valve bounce, which was acting as a governor on the engine, really. Yes. She started to stall at that point. Um, and it was life-threatening this noise. <laughs> what were your working hours? Um, eight o'clock until five. Yes. Or five fifteen very often, yeah. Yes, and, and with hour for lunch. Hour for lunch. Yeah. And good what was the food like in the canteen? Bearable. Yes. It was really, yes. Yeah. We yeah. frequently would go and get two bobs worth. It was damn good. Yes. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Great. They looked after everybody very well. Oh yes, you mentioned you mentioned they were experimenting with chrome liners. Well, yeah, I think that was somebody had mentioned to me that yes. they, they had tried chrome, and it was only my subsequent thought that had it been today with modern synthetic fuel um, yes. lubricants, yes, they might have had more success. But they couldn't keep the pistons from uh, drying up. Right, right, right. But that was all, you know, already in the late forties. They were trying that, so That's right. quite quite advanced stuff. Um, so after, um, so after your apprenticeship, it was national service for you. Mm. Mm. Where, where did you go for that? Where did I go? Yes. <laughs> Is this anything to do with anything? Not really. <laughs> Went to Catrick. Yes. I didn't quite know. In, in, I didn't really know where I was going in the army or yes, what I wanted yes. to do, but um, I had passed all my exams at, at the college, um, thanks to BAC. You know, yes, they put you on day release, go to, go to school every every Thursday, I think it was. So I'd got the qualifications and it um, shot me through the army a bit quicker. Yes. It wasn't less pleasant because of it. It was hideous, actually. I enjoyed that a lot less. Which regiment were you in? I started in the 1721st Lancers. Right. And uh, I was um, 
I, they shipped me down to um, Bovington yes. in Dorset, where they taught me all about the top secret Centurion tank until we became um, specialists yes. in, in uh, particularly the, the Rolls Merlin. Because so they, they had a V12. <laughs> <coughs> Splendid, mm. wonderful. So we learned all about those things. And then I was sent to um, Carlisle, um, where they were reopening a closed camp and as part of the permanent staff. Yes. And uh, the day dawned when we had to go to the station and collect the AFVs. So, armored, armored fighting vehicles. That's right. And we all set off in the back of a five-tonner. And when we got down there, they were all a train full of armoured cars, Daimler armoured cars. Yeah. So there was none of us who knew anything about armoured cars. Right. We quickly learned yes. <laughs> that this can't be any interest to the Bristol people. Well, I think it shows what your engineering skills led to. And, and also that was the life that people, you know, people called up on national service in those days. It was yes. what happened, and it's another, it's another world now. My income dropped from £10 a week for one week yes. when I was 21, yes. and it went back to 12 and 6. 12 and 6, not, not so good, not so good. <laughs> I, sp I suppose the beer was cheaper in the naffy, though. Oh, we couldn't afford beer in the naffy, yeah. good Lord. Yeah. Anyway... Um, it, it was it was quite an experience, yeah, yeah. Quite, but we didn't really much enjoy it. You had a you you um you left you left you were actually injured. And yes, I was not. Um, the peculiarity of the Daimler armor car is that it could be driven backwards at the yes. same speed as being driven forward. Yes. Um, the driver sat in the driver's seat, foot on the accelerator, and being given instructions over the intercom and the um, observer who has had his head out of the turret at the top had a steering wheel. Yes. So he was yelling change gear and so on and steer from the back going backwards. Well this this meant that it had a funny gearbox. Yes. And unless you knew what you were doing you could press the clutch pedal yes. and dive from forward to reverse instantly, which, which happened. Yes. I would just, I had been servicing this vehicle, closed all the hatches, driver got in and drove away in first gear, pressed his clutch pedal, hit reverse. Came back at you. Hit me in, knocked me over, and put me in the inspection pit. Right, right. So I came, I became a medical wreck. Yes, <laughs> yes. Not quite. And did you, did you, were you interested in old cars after all this? Oh, seriously. It started because I needed transport. Yes. Um, when I came out of the army. And, um, and before, as a matter of fact, before we went in, I had this little motorbike. But I wanted to, s to step it up. So I had r restored um, a 1929 um, three-wheel Moggy Morgan. Very nice. With English Anzani engine. Yes, yes. Which was um, lethal. What a cracker. Yes. It was a hugely powerful thing, yeah. So that started the glimmer of it. But it was also cheap and functional. Yes, yes. And when we married, um, friends had a, a Tony had an All Days and Onions, 1914 All Days and Onions. Yeah. 1909, I beg your pardon, 1909 All Days and Onions, and we would spend many happy weekends rallying his lovely car. Yes. All around the south, west, and that's when the bug bit. And after that, we bought an Edwardian, one of our own, <coughs> little stellite. Right, a, a, a Wolsey. Wolsey, yeah, Wolsey Stella. Yeah. And um, it, it, because um, of the influence Betty had with her art training and her interest in antiques, yes. this started us looking around for 
um, somewhere to operate as an antique shop. And we found a suitable place at Cheddar in Somerset and uh, um, had a workshop at the back. Yes. And I created um, a restoration company. So I was looking after um, quite a lot of old cars, included, uh, including many from the museum. Oh, yes. There was a, then. There was a little museum there. A good, very good museum yes. there, yeah. yeah. Members of the VCC. Yes, yes. Veteran Car Club. So I was a member, and I used to look after some of their cars and uh, spent my time restoring really old and interesting machines. Yes, yes. Including one Brighton car. Right. Yeah, rare beast, uh, Tony Huber. Mm. So the bug bit. And which brings us to here we are today. Yes, ancient. Yes. <laughs> Decrepit. Um, well, and Bev, Bev, Bernard, thank you ever so much. Very many, very, very many thanks indeed. Very welcome. Yes. Very welcome. I, uh, I sincerely hope that there's something in all of this prattling that adds something to someone's lives. I think that's been, that's been super.